Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Friday, February 12th, and from new CDC guidance on reopening schools to, of course, day four of the Senate impeachment trial against former President Donald Trump, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, we are getting a little bit of snow tomorrow, but exactly how much, I don't know. Why don't we hand it off to our first alert weather team? Well, if you're just sitting down this evening and thinking, OK, what do we have going on for the weekend? Here's what I can tell you as far as the forecast goes. Snow chances are going to be heaviest after the weekend. So if you're worried about travel, we should be just fine locally. In fact, our next best chances for snow, I think the first one arrives Monday morning. This is going to be just before the morning commute. Light snow, a cold morning. That means the roads are going to be very receptive to the snow. And then Monday night, this is going to be our next potential for some heavier snow. And there will be parts of Northwest Ohio under the gun for potentially over three inches. Here's the way it looks tonight on first alert Doppler said pretty quiet, right? Our big feature going on across the US continues to be in the central part here. High pressure that is continuing to dump down cold Canadian air. It's currently one degree in Minneapolis and in North Dakota there it is six below, but we have a very active weather pattern and this high pressure actually is going to play a big role. It's going to take several storms and slingshot them down across the southern US and kind of redirect it back our way. Let me show you some of these systems that we're watching. First one is this weekend and notice how light this snow is across Iowa. Yeah, there's going to be some snow showers tomorrow, but as far as accumulations, it'll be very minimal. The here comes our Monday morning system just now rounding the four corners and Monday night that storm that has the potential for over three inches in parts of Northwest Ohio. It's just now coming ashore here in the Northwest. I said this was an active weather pattern though, right? Let's go further to the west. I think we're watching another system. That's why we have first alert days out through Thursday, and this one could bring another solid chance for snow. Plenty of time to watch that one though. Let's do hour by hour and get you through the weekend first. Through tonight, cloudy, quiet, maybe a few flurries. Here's a couple of those scattered snow showers tomorrow. This is 8 a.m. and notice just how widespread that the snow is. It's not very, is it? 10 a.m., some light snow for a few hours, and this could be just enough to coat some of those untreated surfaces. By the afternoon, things are quieting down, and here we go through a quiet day on Sunday. It's overnight, Sunday into Monday. That system all the way out there in the four corners. That's when it arrives. So this is 5 p.m. Sunday. We're still quiet. The snow arrives well after dark and will likely be a much bigger impact for our Monday morning. A 19 year old man and a 15 year old girl are now in custody and charged in the February 5th shooting death of Eddie Phillips II at a Northwood hotel. Northwood police say that on Thursday, Jaron Bryant and the 15 year old girl were arrested in Toledo and charged with the murder in Wood County. 37-year-old Phillips was found dead at the Bridgepoint Inn and Suites on Wales and Oregon Road a week ago today. And although these two suspects have been arrested, police are still investigating and taking tips from the public. So if you do have information, you should call 419-691-5053. And the CDC today announced its roadmap for reopening schools with a strong emphasis on mask wearing, social distancing, and they said that while vaccinating teachers and school staff is important, it isn't a requirement to going back into the building. To be clear, while they released their guidance for reopening today, they can't force schools to reopen, and agency officials were careful to say that they are not calling for a mandate requiring all U.S. schools to reopen. They said that there is strong evidence now that in-person schooling can be done safely, especially at lower grade levels, and the guidance is targeted at schools that teach kindergarten up to 12th grade. There's wide argument that learning in the classroom is more effective and that students can face isolation and learning setbacks at home. But teachers unions in some areas say schools have failed to make buildings safe enough to return. The CDC emphasized that in-person learning has not been a substantial driver of coronavirus spread and that transmission between students has been relatively rare. But the CDC stressed that the safest way to open schools is by making sure there's as little disease in the community as possible. The agency urged local officials to assess whether a bad outbreak is occurring in a community when making decisions about sending adults and children into schools. 
That guidance included a color-coded chart from blue to red on assessing community spread, including rates of new cases per 100,000 people and the percentage of positive tests. That said, high community transmission does not necessarily mean schools cannot reopen, especially those at the elementary level. The guidance suggests that if school mitigation measures are strictly followed, the risk of spread in schools should still be low. In Ohio specifically, the goal is to have all schools back to some form of in-person learning by March 1st, and the state is getting closer to reaching that goal. Yesterday, Governor Mike DeWine said only 5.1% of the state's school districts were still fully remote. The pandemic has made everything just a bit different, and tax filing is no exception. The process is starting a bit later this year, today actually, and there are some things to be aware of if you received unemployment, worked from home, took on gig work, were a victim of fraud, or faced other common issues in 2020. But for now, I'm going to focus on two of the big ones, unemployment and stimulus checks. So first, unemployment benefits are taxable income, which may be a surprise to some tax filers. And workers are not required to have federal taxes withheld from their benefit payments. They are given the option to have it withheld, but few choose to do so, so that could rack up what you owe. Now, stimulus checks are not taxable income, but people who did not get their payments or received less than what they were due can get the right amount by claiming the recovery rebate credit on their 2020 taxes. Just as a quick reminder, the first round of payments was worth up to $1,200 per eligible adult and $500 per dependent. The second was worth up to $600 for each eligible household member. Those who received a larger economic impact payment than what they were due will not be penalized. So when will you get your refund? Well, the IRS estimates that about 90% of people who file electronically should get their return within 21 days as long as they have direct deposit. But for more information on the things you need to know before you file your 2020 taxes, check out the link in the description of this video. And lawyers for Donald Trump wrapped up their opening arguments today using just three of the 16 hours they were given. Senators soon after launched right into questioning. They had four hours total to question both sides. Now, the legal team for the former president opened their defense by accusing Democrats of waging a campaign of hatred against the former president and manipulating his words in the lead up to the deadly siege of the U.S. Capitol. The Trump legal team characterized the impeachment case as a politically motivated witch hunt. And after a two-day effort by Democrats to sync up Trump's words to the violence from the January 6th Capitol riot, including through raw and emotive video footage, defense lawyers suggested that Democrats have typically engaged in the same overheated rhetoric as Trump. The defense tried to boil the case down to Trump's use of the single word fight, and they showed a mashup of Democrats using the same word while trying to energize supporters during speeches rallying against Trump. What the Democrats are saying is that this use of the word was in an effort to undermine an election that the states and Congress already declared was free and fair. Democrats say this months-long campaign against the election results laid the groundwork for the mob that assembled outside the Capitol and stormed inside. Now, Trump's legal team challenged that all by saying he was simply telling his supporters to press Congress for reforms to the election process. So what comes next? Well, now that the defense is done and senators got in their questions early, the House impeachment managers could now request witnesses. If they do, the Senate will then debate and vote on whether or not they should subpoena more witnesses or documents. Then it's time for closing arguments. Both sides have a total of four hours split between them before it's finally time for the Senate to vote on the sole article of impeachment, incitement of insurrection. Now, the vote will likely come tomorrow, but it could always be pushed to Sunday. And you can watch every step of the way on WTOL.com and on the WTOL Facebook page. Now, before I go, let's look at something more uplifting. Today was a ceremonial groundbreaking for the 2021 St. Jude Dream Home. This year, the house is located in Perrysburg at the Coventry Point subdivision and is once again being constructed by Mike White and Buckeye Real Estate Group. It is just minutes away from Levis Commons, I-75 and I-475. The house is valued at $390,000 and is four bedrooms, two and a half baths, filling out 2,552 square feet of living space. Last year, you helped us raise $1.3 million for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to ensure the hospital started by Toledo's own Danny Thomas continues to give world-class care to children with cancer at no cost to their families. Tickets for this year's Dream Home become available in May, so stay tuned for that. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.